Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Thanks for dropping by today. I've got a CCNP route and T-shoot video practice exam for you in advanced OSPF. I'm going to bring up what looks like three questions up on the whiteboard in about 10 seconds. It's actually six. And then we'll take a look at the answers on live Cisco routers. So let's jump right in. First question today. Your OSPF speaking router has received a hello from a potential neighbor, but the OSPF rid of that neighbor wasn't in the hello. What OSPF stage are you looking at? Question two, what two specific decimal values must be entered in the command that creates a virtual OSPF link? Usually referred to as an OSPF virtual link. What two specific values do we need in that command? That's a tricky command. We're going to look at that live in a moment. Finally, in ABR, for which of the following area types will inject a default route into that area by default? A stub area, a total stub area, and an NSSA. Now I've got some Cisco documentation I'm going to link to in this video that I'd like you to take a look at. I know that uh, you know Cisco documentation sometimes is like stirring concrete with your eyelashes. I understand, uh, but these are pretty short reads and they are good uh, good things to read before you take your route and T shoot exam. We'll get to the answers in just a moment. I want to make sure that you know about this great deal I'm running on my all-in-one video boot camp and on Udemy. Thank you for the tremendous response. We've got almost 8,000 students in my video boot camps out there now, and you need to join us. This 50-hour course, actually, I think it's officially 53 hours. It's really worth several times the $299, but to thank the community for all your fantastic support, all you've got to do there is type Bulldog60 in for the coupon code, click Apply, and you get my CCNP video bootcamp training for about $2 an hour. It's $119. Your access is permanent. You can download as <coughs> excuse me, download the videos anytime you like, and it's just the best deal I've ever put out. So please check that out. And if you're looking at just route or T-shoot training, we've got those as well, and the coupon code BULLDOG60 gets you in for $44 a pop. Definitely worth checking out there. Now, for this first question, this is actually normal. It just happens so fast that we usually don't even see it. This is the init stage. And all it is is your router's gotten a hello from a potential neighbor, but the RID wasn't in the hello. And we need to see hellos with the OSPF RID of that neighbor coming in to really get the adjacency started. But the initial stage, as you would expect, uh, is called init, and that's what we're looking at. Now, what two specific decimal values have to be entered in the command to create a virtual link? Let's check this out, and we'll actually go a little bit beyond that. And I'm already in OSPF config mode. So let's just say I go on here, and I'm ready to create virtual link, and I use iOS help after the virtual link command, and I get unrecognized command. This can really throw you. To create a virtual link in OSPF, you actually start with the area command. And this is the first of two troubleshooting tips, especially for you T-shooters, you really got to watch for. Because especially when you're first building virtual links, it is so easy to fall into one of these two little traps. The area ID that we have to enter here is the area ID of that transit area. It is not the area ID of the remote area that we're connecting to. It doesn't work that way. So we would put in, say, area 10 here if that was our transit area and then use iOS help again and here's where you actually enter the word virtual link and there is a little hyphen there so you gotta watch that and then it says ID IP address associated with virtual link neighbor that does give us a little bit of a hint here that you need to enter the OSPF RID of that remote neighbor not any other IP address, not necessarily the IP address of the interface that's you know connecting to OSPF, anything like that. You need to put the RID. So the two specific values that we're looking at here is the area number of the transit area and the RID, the OSPF RID of that remote device, that remote router. So you definitely want to watch that. And I've got some virtual link videos on the YouTube channel as well. Now this third question, an ABR for which of the following area types will inject a default route into that area by default? Uh, for the stub area, it will. For the total stub area, it will. For the NSSA, it will not. So you got to watch that. And I've got two documents here, again, that I'll link to uh, on YouTube 
and in the blog as well. But there's a quick article here, a good one on Cisco's site about how OSPF injects a default route into a uh, stub or total stub. I know that was a little offline. There you go. And I've got another one here about injecting a default route into an NSSA. So I'll make sure to link from those from uh, the YouTube description and the blog as well. Thanks so much for coming by and taking today's route and T-Shoot video practice exam. I'm Chris Bryan, and as always, thanks from all of us here at TBA for making us part of your success story. Thanks a lot. We'll see you on the next video.